Hey guys, as always, thanks for stopping by. Gonna burn through a whole series of stuff to get onto your radar right now, and you've now been kinda labeled a domestic terrorist. Let's talk about that. Today's episode is brought to you by ShallNotComply.com. They just released today their new Ear Pro wraps. One color is the 80s were rad, and the other color is black multicam. I'll put a link right down below. You can wrap up your Ear Pro and look rad at the range. So big thanks to Shall Not Comply. All right, gonna burn through several things. I just sat down kind of at the end of the day today here on Wednesday, and I went through a whole bunch of websites, got myself updated. I now know what's going on. And I wanna burn through several things. Instead of delving into just one idea and really hammering it home, I wanna kinda of do an overview because there's several things going on. And then I'll be back again tomorrow with some more stuff. And then Friday is the great big giveaway. I do think it's gonna happen this Friday. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So all weekend long, gonna be giving away a lot of stuff, including a pistol caliber carbine that is sitting right down there. Yesterday I talked about the Kenny Walker and Breonna Taylor case. You can check out that video if you'd like to. It's yesterday's video. And a little bit of pushback. Some people emailed in. There's some different facts that are out there and are different, uh, maybe what we might call some different overviews of how we look at the case. But what is not arguable, because some people are saying, well, hey, the police did knock. And other people are saying, hey, just because the police turned their body cameras off or never turned them on, that doesn't matter because they're the police and we should obey them and lick their boots. Here's what I'm not going to argue. The guy that they were actually looking for was in their custody, police custody, the night before or the day before, and yet they still kitted up and went out and shot Breonna Taylor. I'm not arguing that. That is part of the facts of the case. Anything else is peripheral. The guy was in custody and a young lady was shot eight times. Yeah. Jump down in the comment section argue with me on that one, you nitwit. Bad situation, and I really do hope that the whole Kenny Walker thing does get sorted out. It's not good. All right, let me burn through a couple more. Uh, Governor Stitt, all right, this is really, really good. First time in America, first time ever, great news. Finally got some good news for y'all. And I think most of y'all may have known what happened yesterday. First it happened, then it didn't happen. There was a bunch of flip-flopping, but the Oklahoma governor has now signed into law an anti-red flag law. So now nowhere in the state, no municipalities can create their own red flag laws. And this is such good news. As of today, there's 17 different states with red flag laws. They're bad, and the whole idea is bad. Now, the, the anti-gun left would say, well, would you really want somebody with a mental illness to be able to buy a gun? Well, this, this is very complex. It's a lot of nuances in there. I can say this unequivocally, I don't want anybody to have the power to anonymously report somebody else and then that person have their property seized over an anonymous phone call. It's not good, y'all. So really, really cool. Like, good job for the, the governor of Oklahoma to get signed in law, SB 1081. I know Jared's been covering that very clearly, and a lot of y'all have been calling the governor. It's been a big all hands on deck on that one. Really, really good. So we'll keep watching that one and see what the after effects or what happens in the wake of that situation. All right, up next, one model in the uh, situation. One of the new models that just came out, this just, just hit today. I'll put a link down below to it. There's a lot of different models, and models are what we have when we don't have data, predictability. And one model says that in the U.S. there's going to be over a quarter million deaths by the end of July if we don't keep social distancing and shutting everything down. It's a mess. I wonder how many there'll be if Governor You-Know-Who keeps putting old people with the <coughs> into old folks' homes or nursing homes. It's a mess. The whole thing is a mess. But one model says a quarter million dead. Fear-mongering maybe? Hmm? Maybe. Watching that one, that link is down below. Don't know if that's on your radar, but my point is this. They're taking this seriously, and they are wanting this entire thing shut down. I'm going to make my own predictability model right now. As soon as the election's over, suddenly it'll all disappear. Watch and see. Finally, I mentioned this just uh, two nights ago to you. Last Thursday in Michigan, there was a small group of protesters and these guys went down, it was mostly guys, they went down to protest the entire shutting down of their state in Michigan. They went down to the state house 
and they had what was called Judgment Day. And they went in, some of them went in kit, and the Boogaloo Boys were there, but they were armed like American citizens are absolutely allowed to be. And they freedom, they assembled freely, just like the First Amendment allows. And of course, the Michigan government had to shut, they just had to shut down the entire legislature because it was just so dangerous because of 200 Boogaloo boys exercising their rights. It's a right. And here's the thing I want to mention is this, is that, and I know that, there's my pen too, I know that a lot of times people hide how they feel. And you have to kind of piece together with a little thread. They said this here, and they said that there, and they said this over here. And you piece together maybe a month or a year or years of somebody's life to really try to find out what they believe. Because when the cameras are on, most politicians are, they're pretty plastic. And they'll, you know, you can even stand up and give them the facts to something very, very controversial. And you just lay out, hey, the whole school shooting things don't really, the data doesn't really pan out. It, not even closely. And they'll say, thank you for your enthusiasm on that topic, and they'll move right off. It's very hard to pin a politician down. But if you listen, oh, they will tell you what they think. And I think when there's some people that are a part of it, I do see them as the heads of the deep state. When they speak, it matters, and words matter, and we need to pay attention. Currently unemployed, Hillary Clinton did a tweet about the Boogaloo Boys that were at that protest and said and called them and use the verbiage domestic terrorism. Now, part of me goes, yeah, hilarious. Sorry you're not in office. Sorry you lost. Sorry you're unemployed. But the other part of me is it's a little bit, I look at that and I go, there's a little bit of a window to how these people think. And this matters. We need to pay attention. The verbiage is out there that maybe people showing up to a to protest to stand and be counted in opposition to their local government or their state government or in D.C. with our national government to stand and exercise our right and maybe kid up to be called domestic terrorists. This is a problem. I'm not saying the sky is falling, but I am saying that we need to watch nonsense like that. I think it is, and I really mean this, it is a window to how these people think to name you and to name me as domestic terrorists. And to that I say, from my cold, dead hands. Thanks for stopping by. Bye. <laughs>